Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the recently released Super Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch, and see how it compares to the original game Super Mario Maker for the Wii U. Super Mario Maker is a spin on the classic Super Mario platforming games, where players can piece together their own courses to play using classic Mario assets, including those from the original Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and the new Super Mario Bros. for Wii and Wii U. Because of this, the graphics are likely not going to change much from one platform to the next, so while I'm still going to compare a few visual elements, the main focus for this video is to cover all the big changes to the creator suite, in addition to the new features offered with the sequel. So, starting off, let's investigate whether the visuals have seen any changes going from one platform to the other. While the Nintendo Switch is certainly a more powerful system than the Wii U, there's only so much that can be done to improve on the visual aspects of the classic 8-bit and 16-bit Mario games. The sprites and animations are all practically identical to what the classic games looked like back in the day. However, both versions of Mario Maker feature some slight modifications to make them display properly on more modern displays. The 4x3 aspect ratio, for example, is now pushed out to a 16x9, allowing for more pixels to be displayed on screen without any image stretching. However, both versions do differ when it comes to the resolution. While the Wii U platform is capable of outputting at 1080p, Super Mario Maker is limited to only 720p, primarily because of the demand that the new Super Mario Bros. content puts on the hardware. The Nintendo Switch, on the other hand, runs Super Mario Maker 2 at a native 1080p, at least for the four matching themes. This resolution is lowered to 900p when loading into the new Super Mario 3D World levels. Though bear in mind that even the original full Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U couldn't handle 900p, so this is still a great improvement. When in portable or handheld mode, Mario Maker 2 on the Switch runs at 720p, while Mario Maker on the Wii U can only run at 480p. Outside of resolutions, not a whole lot has changed visually. Textures, lighting, effects, and models are all pretty much carried over directly, though there are a few very small changes that are worth noting. First, the Thwomps now have additional sprites to show when they're waiting, primed, and then attacking. This initially was a feature exclusive to Super Mario World and New Super Mario Bros., but is now properly reflected in the other themes as well. This universal retrofitting also seems to have affected Mario himself, with a new Little Mario crouch animation being added to the original game and Super Mario Bros. 3, similar to the crouch animation used in Super Mario World. This was likely added to signal to the player when they're properly primed to slide down the new slope feature. The classic Mario pipes have also seen some changes, including some new variations to choose from with colors, and a more metallic appearance in the Mario U theme. Seasoned creators in Super Mario Maker will also be disappointed that you can no longer overlap pipes like you could in the first game. But one of the most interesting changes to Mario Maker 2 is the alterations made to the backgrounds and the water effects. In order to account for the addition of water in non-underwater levels, the water effect has been altered slightly, appearing more transparent than it used to. The surface of lava has also changed, and appears slightly more complex now. And then of course, the backgrounds for many of the different themes have also seen some changes, with the castle theme in Super Mario 3 no longer appearing as a blank black background, and many of the backgrounds in the new Super Mario Bros. U now offering much more detail, like this big fish in the background. Still, even with these changes, the experience looks practically identical to the original game. The real differences come from the changes made to the interface and the various new features. Mario Maker 2 no longer features the silly interactivity of the original game due to a decreased focus on the touchscreen interface. Mario Maker 2 still allows for touchscreen controls when in portable mode, but because the controller no longer requires the screen to be attached at all times like on the Wii U, the creation interface has been drastically changed, resulting in what I think is a less intuitive design. Previously, players could simply use the attached stylus to pick and choose anything from the toolbars with ease and place it directly on the screen. Again, this is still possible in portable mode for Mario Maker 2, but it doesn't feel like the intended control scheme anymore. The main menu, for example, can no longer be interacted with, meaning you can't touch the letters in the title to make them do funny things. Players also can no longer shake objects and characters to change their properties. Instead, clicking and holding an object pulls up a small sub-menu that lets you manually select modifications like whether you want to give a super mushroom to make it larger, or wings to make it fly. This menu, while not as silly and fun as before, is much easier to work with, and will likely save your screen from the inevitable wear and tear that comes from rubbing a stylus back and forth across it for hours on end. To account for this change of focus to a more conventional control scheme, Mario Maker 2's item menus have been changed significantly. 
In the original game, items would appear in a simple grid, with six customizable categories that could be selected to appear as the default toolbar. Mario Maker 2, however, seems to only allow for the most recently used items to appear in the top toolbar, and the expanded item menu has been changed to a radial design, with distinct categories being separated by pages. This makes selecting specific items much easier, as previously you need to strain your eyes, especially in handheld mode, in order to spot the icon of the item you wanted to use. Though I do wish that there was an option to customize the top toolbar, rather than needing to rely only on the most recently used items. Speaking of which, let's talk about some of the new items exclusive to Mario Maker 2. One of the most requested features from the original game was the ability to create sloped surfaces. And thankfully, Nintendo has delivered on this front, and two different varieties of slopes are now available to place in your levels, giving created courses a much more polished and natural feel, as opposed to the constant grid-like appearance of courses in the first game. In addition to this, Mario Maker 2 also features a few new items to play with, including large coins with the ability to select between three different bulk coin values, the Boom Boom enemy, allowing players to add another boss element to their levels, the Angry Sun from Super Mario Bros. 3, the giant Banzai Bill from Super Mario World, icicle traps, seesaws, twisters, a swinging claw device, on-off switches which interact with dotted line blocks and can change active tracks, and even the snake blocks with the ability to create custom paths for them. Unlike Mario Maker 1, the sequel no longer requires players to wait around to unlock all the tools and items for creation. When the original game released, players were stuck waiting for shipments and level kits to be delivered on a weird schedule system. This could of course be exploited, and later patches allowed players to unlock these faster by simply placing any new items at least once, and then spamming bricks across the screen, but it was still a minor annoyance. Mario Maker 2 thankfully avoids this mistake, and players can begin creating their masterpieces as soon as they boot up the game. There are a few secret power-ups that can be unlocked by completing the story mode, but these are unique and special enough that they don't necessarily need to be available right at the start. Next, let's talk about themes. The original Mario Maker features four themes, the original Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and the new Super Mario Bros. Wii or Wii U. Each of these themes also comes equipped with six backgrounds to choose from, including the ground background, underground, underwater, haunted house, castle, and airship. All six of these backgrounds have returned for Mario Maker 2, in addition to four new backgrounds, including desert, forest, snow, and sky. Unique to the forest level is the ability to adjust the water height, allowing for a hybrid of ground platforming and underwater gameplay. In the original Mario Maker, underwater gameplay was limited to the strict fully underwater background. You could always combine this with a sub-level to mix up the gameplay, but Mario Maker 2 allows for a seamless transition. This water level mechanic has also been applied by default to the castle levels, allowing players to manually adjust the lava height and create challenges with rising lava. Moreover, Mario Maker 2 also features a secret day-night slider, unlocked by placing the Angry Sun object into a level. This appears to be compatible with most themes and backgrounds, and not only changes the appearance of the level, but can also tweak the music and introduce some unique gameplay mechanics, like wind to the desert levels. Super Mario Maker 2 also features the addition of the new Super Mario 3D World theme. This theme is very different from the others, as it cannot be seamlessly swapped between. Switching to this theme requires a complete reset of the level, as the enemies, props, and physics simply aren't compatible with each other. This theme comes equipped with a few unique objects, including the clear pipes from 3D World, the large explanation mark boxes, and unique power-ups like the cat suit. This new theme is a great addition, though it is disappointing that they couldn't find a way to implement this into the palette swap mechanic. Mario Maker 2's creation suite also features a few nice additions like a custom auto-scroll option that will adjust the speed of the auto-scroll based on the user-defined track, new clear conditions to dictate when a player is allowed to cross the finish line, a new two-player option for creating levels, and a greatly expanded sound menu. However, I don't see an option to record your own voice anymore, a feature that was previously only available for levels created locally and not shared online. But the creation tool is only a part of the Mario Maker experience. Mario Maker 2 also includes a fantastic single-player component called Story Mode. In Story Mode, players need to help rebuild a castle by taking on contracts from Toad and playing through over 100 developer-made levels that not only are fun to play, but also highlight all the new features and mechanics available for players to create with. The original game also featured a single-player mode, only this was referred to as the 10 Mario Challenge. 
In this mode, players need to complete 8 random developer-made courses, and complete them with only 10 lives. This mode only features around 50-some levels, and the inability to choose which levels made this experience less interesting. The original Mario Maker also featured a unique mode called the 100 Mario Challenge. Unlike the 10 Mario Challenge, the 100 Mario Challenge centers around community-made levels, and offers an opportunity to earn unique character costumes. This challenge has been replaced by the Endless mode in Mario Maker 2, and the costume system has been replaced by a new customizable me. This also means that the silly mystery mushroom power from the first game is no longer a part of Mario Maker 2. Mario Maker 2 also removes the 10 level publishing cap. Initially, players new to Mario Maker were restricted to only being allowed to publish 10 levels and were given additional level slots after earning enough stars from community members that enjoyed their creations. The old system eventually allowed quality creators to publish up to 100 courses. Mario Maker 2 bumps the starting level cap up to a default 32, but there doesn't appear to be any way to go any further than this. Hopefully, this restriction means levels won't be randomly deleted to clear space on their servers like last time, but I can see veteran creators being a little bit frustrated with this. Finally, one other big change between these two games is the removal of the Fly Swatter minigame Nat Attack. This easter egg, originally introduced in the Super Nintendo's Mario Paint, tasked players with swatting at flies on the screen and fighting bosses. This was a fun callback that apparently didn't make the cut for the Switch version, likely due to the inability to use a touchscreen when in docked mode. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Due to the nature of this game and its retro visual design, there's not much that can be said about improvements to the graphics, outside of the improved backgrounds for the Mario U levels, the inclusion of Super Mario 3D World assets, and some altered sprites to make the various styles more consistent with each other. But Mario Maker 2 does offer a number of new features that help us stand out from its predecessor. The control scheme, while not nearly as intuitive, does allow players to take full advantage of the creation suite while on the go, or when in docked mode and the inclusion of a full story campaign adds significantly more value and structure to the experience. It is a shame that so many of the more lighthearted and fun concepts introduced in the first Mario Maker couldn't be implemented in the sequel, but I think the new creation tools and story mode more than make up for it. But what do you guys think? Are you enjoying Super Mario Maker 2? Or did you like the original game more? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.